But tonight we're going to start our second BC only topic called partial fractions. It is a, it does fall in the category of advanced integration techniques. And um, the good news is is historically we have found this to be one of the easiest topics of the year. So I think we're going to be pretty rock solid at these. And uh, uh, about ninety percent of our effort that we put into these problems tonight is going to be is going to uh, rely on something that you did back in pre-calc. The actual calculus tonight is extremely uh, primitive and, and elementary. So as a warm up, I want to ask you. I want to throw three integrals at you here. And I'm going to let you hit the pause button and try to integrate these three, and just kind of gauge yourself, give yourself a score, uh, you know, on a scale of zero to ten, and just ask yourself how easy are these integrals, how comfortable do you feel with these three integrals, and that's going to be a, a good indication of how strong we're going to be tonight. So go ahead, hit that pause button, and see how you like these. Well, the theme that you probably noticed on all three of these is they all had something in common. They all fit into the pattern of du over u. And on this first particular one, my u would be my denominator, and I got 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2 plus c. Now, I had a little trickier here in the second one was because of the extra coefficient. By the time I let u equal 3x plus 1, I had a coefficient of 4 thirds. And again, um, you know, if you want to do work out the entire u sub and show the work and you feel more comfortable, then by all means, go ahead and do that. But if you can skip those steps, I'd encourage you to do so. And the third one is the most deceptive one because um, if we do let u equal 1 minus x, we're going to get a negative 4 as my coefficient. Natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus x plus c. Now what I want you to watch out for is, and we may see this from time to time, is what if I put 4 over the quantity 1 minus x squared, alright? Now in this particular case, um, we would still, we would only let u equal the inner function of the denominator, and it would work out we wouldn't get du over u, we'd end up getting something like du over u squared, which we would rewrite as u to the negative 2, and we'd use our power rule. So I just want to pay attention, and once we throw a co or an exponent on that denominator, it's no longer du over u. So as far as partial fractions goes, and as we begin to introduce this topic, you know, what does it really boil down to? Well, a couple years ago when you were an Algebra 2 student, we would have thrown these two fractions at you and said, hey, can you add these for me? And you would have worked really hard on getting common denominators and then adjusting the numerators accordingly, and you would have ended up with this very simple fraction as your final answer. Now what this is called, this is called a rational function. A rational function is the quotient of two polynomials, okay? And um, but then all of a sudden last year in pre-calc we did just the opposite. We, we flipped the table and we said, okay, here's a rational function. Can you work backwards and figure out what two simpler fractions did I add together in order to get this one big bear right here? And so we call that, I like to use the word decomposition. We're going to decompose the one big fraction into two simpler ones. And, um, and that's the method called partial fractions. So our whole focus tonight when we talk about partial fractions is we're really going to talk about how do we integrate rational functions. And so just a quick recap, you know, what is a rational function anyway? And as I kind of mentioned real quickly on the last slide, it is the quotient of two polynomials. Okay, it's the quotient of two polynomials. Now a lot of times earlier, like the first three we saw in the original slide, um, you know, those were all rational functions, but they all were really nice u sub problems. They all fit du over u pretty nicely, you know, or some kind of u sub got the job done. And so tonight we're going to see rational functions where u sub doesn't get the job done. And, um, you know, I'm just going to say something like p of x divided by q of x would be the standard form of our rational functions. Now, the key here is to remember that all rational functions can be rewritten as the sum of two simpler fractions, or, or I shouldn't say two, it could, be, it could be more than two, but the key is simpler fractions called partial fractions. So basically partial fractions is all about a technique that we use to rewrite the problems so that they can be easily integrated. For instance, they're going to throw this at you tonight. And no matter what you let u equal, it doesn't matter whether you let u equal the denominator or whatever you try to do, u sub as we know it to, as of this moment will not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our partial fraction technique that we learned in pre-calc to rewrite this fraction right here as the sum of two smaller fractions, or in this case the difference of two simpler fractions. 
And then integrating those two rascals is going to be a lot easier um, than integrating the original one. So that's really where we're heading tonight. Now my question to you is, what do you notice about these denominators right here? All right, the key tonight is these denominators are what we call distinct linear pairs or dis distinct linear denominators. All right, as opposed to repeated linear or you know distinct quadratic, anything like that. So these are distinct linear denominators. And to begin the me method of partial fractions, we're always going to think a over the first denominator, which was in this case x minus three, you know, plus b. And we always assume plus, and then maybe b turns out to be a negative coefficient. Um, the second denominator, which in this case was x plus 2, and then we're off to the races and running. But tonight we're going to put all of our energy into distinct linear denominators. And uh, we, may, uh, we may kind of experiment with some repeated linear denominators or some distinct quadratics, but generally the AP doesn't go down that road. All right, so, so far I've done a lot of rambling, so I think it's time that we jump into one and see a live example of a partial fraction. So the first thing they're going to start off is they're going to, the ultimate question is they want us to integrate this rational function, x minus 8 divided by x squared minus x minus 6 with respect to x. And like I said earlier, like my first instinct is when I'm in the middle of a test, I may let try to let you equal the denominator, but what you're going to quickly realize is that... Um, you know, that leads to a dead end and, and then my DU doesn't quite kill all the X's and so forth. So, so my next option is when I'm working with a partial, or, uh, with a rational function like this is I'm going to try the method of partial fractions. My, I'm going to ask myself, can I rewrite this fraction as the sum of two simpler fractions? So I'm going to do all of the pre-calc work in blue pen here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get it factored as completely as possible in the denominator. So I'm going to go X plus 2 times X minus 3 in the denominator. And what we know is, again, we have distinct linear denominators. First denominator being x plus 2 and the second denominator being x minus 3. And because the denominators are a first degree function, my numerators are going to be constants. And then, so basically I'm trying to solve this fractional equation. What I'm going to do is, I would wrap this rascal up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to always distribute the common denominator through the entire equation. So in this case, it was x plus 2 times x minus 3. And that's what I'm going to distribute through the entire thing. So as I just, whoops, did I put that over x? I meant, I'm always going to put that over 1. All right. So as I distribute that to all three of these fractions, you'll notice on the first fraction, let's see, the denominators are cancel out with these rascals, and I get just x minus 8. Okay. On the second distribution, the x plus 2 cancels with x plus 2, but I still have an x minus 3 to multiply the a by. And then on the third distribution, I'm going to kill the x minus 3's, but I still have the x plus 2. And so now I'm going to work on solving this. And here's how I go about it. I'm going to pick what I feel are convenient strategic values of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to let x equal 3. Now why in the world would I pick 3 of all the numbers in the world? Well what you'll notice is this quantity right here, when I substitute a 3 in for x, it becomes a 0, which is very strategic. So I'm substituting a 3 in for all the x's here, and I'm going to get negative 5 equals a times 0 plus b times 5, or 5b. Five uh, obviously this term cancels out, divide by 5, and negative 1 is the value of b. All right, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to strategically, I'm going to let x equal negative 2. All right, again, why in the world, would, of, all the world or of all the numbers in the world, why would I pick negative 2? Well, because that quantity right there is going to zero out. So I'm going to substitute it into all the x's again, and I've got negative 10 equals, let's see, negative 5a plus 0b, which of course zeroes out. You do not have to write that term. Divide by negative 5, and I got positive 2 equals a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Now that I know what the value of a is and what the value of b is, I'm going to rewrite those two fractions in a more convenient way. So here's where the calculus is going to pick up. We're going to say instead of integrating x minus 8 over x squared minus x minus 6, we're actually going to integrate... Um, let's see, 2 over x plus 2 minus, because b was a negative value, 1 over x minus 3. 
and these are equivalent, okay, this fraction again is equivalent to the difference of those two, it's just the second one's a lot easier to integrate. We're going to get 2 times the natural log of x plus 2 minus the natural log of x minus 3, and ladies and gentlemen, we are done. So as you saw in our first example, the, the actual calculus part, the actual integrating is very short and sweet at the very end. Um, it's all the setup work that goes into these problems. So our second example tonight, I want you to think about how you would integrate 4x minus 1 divided by 2x squared minus x minus 3 with respect to x. Again, it's a rational function, so the light bulb starts to kind of go off, and you're thinking, well, maybe it could be partial fractions. You know, you would certainly try a U sub first, but because it leads to a dead end, we're going to go try partial fractions. And like I said, the first thing I try to do is I get my denominator factored as completely as possible. This one we're going to have real fun with. It's a little bit of trial and error. So I know that I need a 2x times an x. I need to work with the multiples of negative 3. So I'm going to go, let's see, negative 3 here plus 1 there. Then I kind of foil it back together to see if it confirms the middle term, and it does. So we're ready to rock and roll. Both of the denominators are linear, and they're distinct. They're not, you know, duplicates or anything like that. So I'm going to use a divided by 2x minus 3 plus b divided by the x plus 1. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that bear up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute um, my common denominator throughout the entire equation on both sides. Okay. Of course, I'm just putting that over 1. As I distribute it to the first term, all I get is 4x minus 1. As I distribute to the second term, I'm going to get a times the quantity x plus 1. As I distribute it to the third term, I'm going to get b times the quantity 2x minus 3. All right. So, you know, right there, you know, if, if that's a complicated step, then by all means, that's something that, uh, you know, give me a wave tomorrow in class and we'll just try to spend some more time on it because I know I'm going pretty quick through that, um, depending on, you know, how you would have approached that, uh, you know, last year. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick strategic, convenient values of X. And my first one, I'm just going to let X equal what? What would you start off with? I'm going to let X equal negative one so that this quantity right here zeroes out. So substituting a negative 1 in for all of the x's, I'm going to get, let's see, negative 5 equals 0 times a plus, let's see, um, I think that's going to give me negative 5b. So divide by negative 5 and I get positive 1 for my b value. Always good when you get positives. Now for my second one, here's where it gets a little more interesting. And I'm going to say, well, you could let x equal positive 3 halves and that would force this bear to zero out. But, you know, sometimes working with fractions becomes, you know, harder than we really want it to be. So I'm just going to let x equal the next best number in the world, which is zero. It may not zero out any of the individual terms, but it's going to be really easy to work with. So I'm going to substitute a zero in for all of these x's, and I'm going to get negative one equals one a, and that's going to give me negative three b. Now this seems a little daunting because there's you got a's and b's still in there, but re remember what you already know. You already know that b is equal to one, so you could plug that in. And so if you add the th you know multiply by negative three, add it over, you're going to get two equals a. And now we're ready to rewrite our integral. So just to reemphasize what we're doing here tonight, um, they started off by asking me to integrate four x minus one all over two x squared minus x minus three, and we're saying well. Thanks, but no thanks. I'd rather integrate this one. I'd rather integrate 2 over 2x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 1. And this is going to be a lot easier integral. What I really want you to pay attention, though, is this denominator right here. We are going to, it is du over u. We are going to get an ln in our antiderivative, but watch your coefficient, okay? Once I let u equal this rascal right here, I'm going to get a coefficient of 1 half, and I'm going to multiply it by the numerator I already have. It's going to give me a coefficient of 1 when I'm all done. So I've got the natural log of 2x minus 3 plus the natural log of x plus 1 plus c. And you know that they like to be a little creative when it comes to lns. We could condense these two logs into one log and express it as the product of 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. So, of course, it could be 2x squared and then um, minus x minus 3 plus c. So, hope you enjoyed partial fractions tonight. We're going to get lots of practice under our belt tomorrow. Keep on chugging, and we'll see you tomorrow.